You can get a The Witcher 3 inspired weapon in Cyberpunk, The Caretaker's Spade. I will tell you how and also talk about another amazing weapon like Rogue's Gun and more. So really a ton to go over. A like on the video would really help me out. And let's go. If you played the Hearts of Stone DLC from The Witcher 3, then you might remember this shuffle because it's the one from the Caretaker boss, including the blue trail when swinging it around. It has a completely unique model and silhouette in the UI and totally gets the job done in Cyberpunk. Like the stats overall aren't that special with the pretty low crit chance and crit damage but you will still be able to take out enemies rather quickly. The 20% bleeding chance is of course pretty high, but arguably better on a blade than on a blunt weapon that will of course not kill enemies when you take them out with a regular swing. You can upgrade the regular damage significantly by crafting. It will cost you quite a lot of resources, but it makes the weapon way more powerful. There is something interesting going on with the damage though, and you will see that in a moment when I pick the weapon up. But yeah, overall, it's a very fun weapon to use, especially if you have played The Witcher 3, and it has a unique sound effect too. <laughs> So you can get and keep this weapon during one of the endings and I'll explain how in a second while talking about it as fake as possible so you get as little spoilers as possible. But first I want to look at another weapon from Rogue called Pride that you also get during that point of no return mission. So then you can keep both this gun and this shuffle if you go down this path. And this pistol is wild because it focuses on crit chance with the perk increasing the crit chance even more and also the headshot damage while it already has a 5.40 headshot damage multiplier. So that already makes the weapon insane, but you can make it even better if you put a silencer on it, and you can buy that at the different weapon fenders in Night City, like I just went to the one over here on the map, like it's in Haywood, and then just talk with the merchant and go to the mod sort of tap, and then you will see the silencer, like a blue one here, 2.5 damage multiplier when attacking from stealth, and the silencer only reduces 15% damage, while lower rarity ones will reduce even more. So they can just sneak into a camp and take out enemies one by one with a single headshot without other enemies noticing. And again, you get that extra damage when attacking from stealth. So it's really perfect for if you like to avoid combat. And the perk on this weapon also mentions stun, like the chance is indeed small, but when it happens, the enemy will just be unable to do anything and just kind of stand there. So you can easily take out enemies or focus on other targets. And if it then does end in a firefight, the weapon can still easily take out enemies thanks to the nice fire rate and the bleeding chance that has a 10% chance to apply. Before I tell you about another amazing unique weapon that you can actually already gets before the final mission of the game now let's focus on how you can get rogues gun and the shuffle but again this is during one path of the final mission I will keep it as spoiler free as possible but will of course show some things that happen during that final mission before the final mission though you need to finish the chipping in which unlocks after the Tabor main mission near the end of the game and sometimes you will already get a notification that you got the Tabor mission available but that is a bug so just focus on the main story and then at one point you will reach Tabor which opens up the chipping in mission and we of course already talked about the chipping in mission during the Johnny's items video because you get a ton of items during this mission and then after chipping in you need to do the blistering love that opens up so follow it and complete it and now go and start the final mission and what you basically want to do is go with Johnny's plan during that mission on the roof and then continue with the quest from there on out now, at one point you will be in a forest with Rogue and then she will simply hide behind a rock and next to her then you will easily find the shuffle. But here you will see that it has 1971 damage and it will also be the case when you check it in your inventory. But then after the credits roll and you go back into the open world, 
you will see that the shovel has a way lower damage. So maybe it's a bug that they will fix later on, or maybe it's intended because 19 on the damage for a pretty fast blunt weapon is of course really powerful. But yeah, overall it's kind of weird that at one point the damage is way higher than when you like actually can use it in the open world. You can get Rogue's Pistol a little later during this ending path. You get it during the Knocking on Heaven's Door mission, after the boss fight, there's an optional objective telling you to pick up the gun. So totally do it and then you will have it. But what you can actually also do is save before you are able to pick up the gun and then reroll the stats. So after picking it up, checking it in your inventory, reload to the save you just made and they can pick up the weapon again and then you will see different stats for example ricochet bullets can appear instead of the crit damage although i think the crit damage is better but also the percentages of the stats can be slightly different so you can do this tactic a couple of times until you get the roll that you want and then just continue with the mission until you roll credits and then in the open world you will have both weapons and it seems that you keep the weapons from the last ending you completed. Although, and correct me if I'm wrong, the other endings don't really have the same quality rewards compared to the ones you get here. Another cool unique weapon you can get, and again, this before the ending, the Sumitogi. A Shakatana that with one hit takes care of these lower level enemies, so not really weird, but it's also great against enemies on your level, especially against Maelstrom enemies and robots that of course take more damage from shock weapons. So it always comes with the electrical damage and the shock chance, so when you craft it, you pick it up as a rare weapon and then you get the epic crafting recipe and after you craft the epic version you can craft a legendary variant and this one has 30% shock chance which will then also be increased thanks to the perk on the weapon and the perk also notes that non-standard attacks deal more damage. So it's really powerful if you want to play around with the shock damage and you find it by doing one of the Judy side missions. So the first one is called Both Sides Now and that one should open up after the transmission main mission. So after completing that, you skip the time ahead to get a call from Judy or maybe you already had the call and then the quest will of course be in your journal. And then after completing that and two more side missions where again you want to skip the time forward to immediately be able to trigger them. Either way, they can do the Pisces mission. And during this mission, you will have to infiltrate a penthouse and then here on a table in the room where the Tiger Claws had the meeting, there will be a katana in front of them that you want to pick up and then it will be in your arsenal. And these missions are also needed to romance Judy, although you need to have a female body and voice tone, so gotta replay the game myself. But either way, of course, if you find things in Cyberpunk, let me know via the input at draptor.com email address or in the comments of this video. Subscribe for way more cyberpunk content. A like on the video would of course really help me out. And totally check out my video on 8 amazing vehicles that you can very easily get in the game if you know where to look. So check it out by clicking on the screen. For now I will speak to you next time and goodbye.